And welcome back to the Spinner Act, presented by Comics Remix, episode 68. Season finale. Our 2015 year in review. The end of year four yeah. for Comics Remix as a brand. Four years. Long time. As always, Brian Seems Adams, like it, but it Junior Ruiz, like it. we here to break it down, what we thought of this year. <laughs> nice. Sorry. Take out of my tracks. Wrong show. Bow, 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 Wrong podcast, buddy. Okay. Whatever. So, you know, this, this as you said at the end of last week's episode, this has been a lackluster year. It has. It really has. For comics. Has. Um, we had two big, the two big cons this year, San Diego, New York. Both. I like how the two big cons are neither Wizard World nor C2E2. Yeah, totally. I don't consider them that. I consider C2E2 a big con. Yeah. Not only that because it's in our backyard. Well, true that. But no big news out of those cons, really, as far as actual comic book stuff. No. Outside of stuff you'd already heard or had mm-hmm. already been spoiled. And that's the problem with the internet. We've yeah. We've discussed this many times. Um, one of the biggest things I think we discussed this year, we started the year, up, the year out with it, and we probably mentioned it many times throughout the year, it was fan outrage. Specifically when we started off with the Batgirl cover mm-hmm. and the Minara Spider-Woman cover. Hashtag keep the cover. Yeah. You know, it's been like the year of the SJW. It's like... So, so, so... No, wait, wait, don't tell me. SJW. Uh, Society Justice Warrior. Social. <sighs> social, you were close. I was trying to make it like an 80s thing. Nice. You know, like, you, they play and you have the big explosion. Right. Like, blah, blah. like helicopters, you know what I mean? And right. I got it. The no, harbor, I, I, like I get you. Miami Vice style. I get you. I get you. Drug kingpins, right pounds on. of cocaine all in the lake. <laughs> That's a good That's Social like... justice warriors. <sighs> nice. You know, like when the Power Rangers morph and then they pose. Uh huh. And like all that explosion goes off right. in the background like that. Okay. What I never got, now that I bring that up, is when they're facing whatever villain they're facing, and they're like, I'm going to destroy you, Rangers. Really? It's morphing time. And then they take a few minutes to morph and they change in their outfits. How come they, they never just kill them before? Yeah, or during morph. Right. Like, why the guy just be like, man, screw this, and just take the sword and just... Did you ever think that maybe the morph was just an instantaneous thing? I don't know. That That's just true. happened like that? But then why they But they're just showing it to you? Why do they pose? I don't know, because it's Japanese, and Japanese are into posing. Like, you know what I mean? Look like, at Dragon Ball. just have Goldar, just be like, Raw. Look at Dragon Ball Z, dude. The Ginyu Force. They're all about the pose. That was. But that was, like, satire. That was funny. Which then even inspired Gohan later on in his life. When he becomes posing. great, say a man to yep. be all about the pose. Yep. It's just, I think it's just a Japanese thing. The best pose of all time had to be the fusion pose. Yeah. The little dance. Whoop. The fusion dance was great, dude. But uh, everyone's easily butt hurt this year. Very. It's like super sensitive. Over everything, you know? Which is funny, considering the Batgirl thing, that we, we have in one year all this outrage about the killing joke. But yet DC greenlights the movie. And DC greenlights a, a, a Killing Joke animated feature. But isn't it like uh, PG, is it PG-13 no. rated R? Apparently they're going to the walls with it, man. That's That makes me laugh. That's funny. It is funny. That's, that's really funny. That's some irony right there. You know, when it comes to comics this year, there's only two words separate, but two words that come to mind that can describe the year as a whole. Relaunches. And variant covers. Absolutely. Totally. Those are the only two things that come to mind. Um, variant covers, as we talked about last week with Marvel launching the 92 variants, have been all the rage this year, and we've seen everything. We've seen everything from bombshell covers to horror theme covers to hip hop covers to movie poster covers to you name it, we've seen it this year. Like, variant covers have, like, just. Ex- I'm waiting. Exploded. We've seen this Lego year. covers. Well, that was last year. Looney Tunes. Yeah, the Looney Tunes ones. I'm waiting next year, 2016. I'm calling it now. Pop vinyl covers. Nice. It I'm could happen. It, it could happen. It. Why not? Right. Yeah, it could happen before the bubble bursts. Because they did the Legos, so. They did. Um, well, action figure yeah, yeah, covers have been year. really big. No, year. they're still doing them. Was it? I thought yeah, that was Secret just, Wars. That the, oh, that's right. Secret, Secret Wars. Wars. Did well, they started a bunch. Last year. Um, I you know, the they've, shop. they've gotten just out of hand with the very, co- De- like the spe- specific characters getting their own covers, i.e. Deadpool, uh, Gwen Stacy, Destro, Harley Quinn. Harley. Now, you mean, I mean like Green Lantern, that was like 75th anniversary, like anniversary covers, I understand. Right. You know, that's, but just a variant, the just Batman to be a variant, Flash, you know. Green Lantern, 
Batman's. Mm -hmm. Joker. Did they do a Joker mm -hmm. one? They did. That was when, you know, the Batgirl oh, yeah, was yeah, the yeah, Joker. Yeah. That's right, that's right. But uh, it's seriously, it's been huge, huge all year. Um, it kind of sucks because, like you are saying, half the time, there are incentives. So if people are collecting those, they're obviously paying more money than standard yeah. cover price. Terrible wide line events this year. Terrible. Um, you can't do a year in review without Convergence. mentioning the suck that was Future's End and Convergence. Yeah. And the sad thing is, is I really felt that, like, maybe when Marvel... Damn. When Marvel entered into Secret Wars, I really felt like maybe that they had taken a footnote out of what DC had done and realized, okay, this is how not to handle a crossover event. Right. Now, at first, as I had said on the spinner rack, it wasn't too bad. But then I hit a point where it was just like, this sucks. And it, and it became a convergence level of suck. Right now we're at the end of November. Right. Has Marvel finished Secret War yet? No. I believe it is an eight-issue series. Right, but wasn't it supposed to be done this past summer? And I believe seven issues just... The seventh issue just came out within the last couple weeks. Jeez. Which is funny, because you would think that, that Secret Wars would before. wrap, and then they would do their all-new, all-different Marvel now, which launched prematurely, in my opinion. Yeah. And oh, to yeah. not the critical acclaim you would expect. Like, for being all-new, all-different, as I've said in previous episodes... It hardly was. But uh, it's just, you know, it's it's sad because as the big two that control the majority, we'll say they control 70-75% of the market share of money spent on comic books, they are doing a disservice to the industry by putting out just crap. And then it's like they're relying on their only way to make money is variant covers which is really really bad which is sad variant covers and, and specifically marvel with relaunch number ones um mm -hmm. i will give dc some credit this year for having the guts to take the initiative to say okay we're going to ditch continuity we're just going to tell stories and you know for all the complaining and moaning that people do online about things obviously that's not what they wanted right. because people aren't buying it you know, I don't understand how people can complain, this is what we want, you know, give us this, and, you know, th and you, you get what you want, and you don't want it. It's like how we've talked about diversity, which has been a big thing this year. Diversifying, which Marvel's done a lot of diversifying, I feel like DC has done it too, but obviously people don't give enough of a crap about it because it's not selling. I agree. You know, it's, how many of those, how many of those diversifying titles hit the chopping block? You know, it, it's ridiculous. You can't, as a fan, want something, and then when they give it to you, just be like, oh, that's not really what I wanted. That's why, I, again, I feel like part of what made this such a lackluster year for the industry is the industry has been listening to the wrong fans. The industry has been listening to the fans that aren't really putting money in their pockets. No, they've been listening to the ones that... They're, they're listening like... to the vocal minority. The same people that have... Com and complained about everything. The ones that walk into the shop while I was working there and be like, hey, I heard they're killing Spider-Man. Is that comic out yet? Yeah. Those guys. Jerks. I ruin everything for everybody. Hey, is there a new number one Spider-Man coming out? Oh, I gotta get that. It's just, it's ridiculous. You know, it's been terrible. And this is also a year that out of horrible things have given us the death of Batman and Superman. But not really. You know, both of them died, but they didn't die. And it's the year that gave us, that brought us the the bro man and Robo and Robo Pat. Neither of which I am as enthusiastic about as I was when I first started. That Superman thing, I know at first I had supported it. I had told you that it wasn't that bad, but it's like their the storytelling has went just so south, man. It's gotten so dragged out. It's become so boring, mm -hmm. and it's just like, I don't care that I, I stopped reading it. I actually haven't given up on Batman yet, because I've been reading Batman my entire life. And, you know, three issues into Jim Gordon, Robo-Batman, they've given you an out, with Bruce Wayne not really being dead, but not remembering who Batman is, but 
you know, leave it to Batman to always have a contingency plan for anything. There was a machine in the Batcave that Alfred could hook Bruce Wayne up to that will make Bruce Wayne remember everything that he doesn't remember. Which is just, it's like, you know, it's deus ex, deus ex machina. <laughs> It's just, you know, it's a, and that's another thing, you know, it's just like, why not just, uh, if you want to change, why not do what Marvel did with the ultimate line? Like, if you want to do something different, why not just, why didn't they just do that? Because I really feel like DC was that, before DC did the new 52, I don't feel like they were as bad off as they, they felt like they were. Um, their comics were doing good, Green Lantern was strong, Batman was super strong, Flash was even strong, I mean, they had just brought back Barry Allen, and... That didn't even ruin that character. Right. The only issues really for their big heroes were, I mean, there was no Aquaman book. Justice League was give or take. And Superman and Wonder Woman were kind of, I mean, Superman wasn't that bad. Superman was hitting a stride here and there where it was getting good. And Wonder Woman was kind of in like a weird purgatory with that book. Which she, I feel like, is the only one that really benefited from the relaunch out of all those heroes. And Justice League is actually, the, the Dark Side War has been really good. Has it been? It's been one of the most interesting Justice League stories I've read in a really long time. That's saying something. Um, the funny thing about that is, as much as we uh, like to give all the credit to DC and Marvel for being the big two and owning most of the pie, Image dominated graphic novel sales this year. Yes, they did. Which, you know, uh, I can't speak enough about how, you know, this. It's, people sometimes don't realize that the world of comics, it's bigger than just... DC and Marvel, and even Image. There's a lot of other smaller indie publishers out there, but Image is one of the best, if not the best, at least sales-wise, independent publisher there is. So and they really give you, down. they really give you everything all across the board. You know, you've got you've got your superhero comic books, you've got horror comic books, you've got a comp, like any kind of genre of book. They do it all, man. They do it all, and they do it yeah. well. There are so many image books I read that like, I, I completely forget about reading. You know, there's Saga, great book. Walking Dead, great book. Birthright, it's another great book. There's so much great stuff coming out. Revival, I think, is an image book. There's a ton of great books. There's a ton of stuff coming out from Image that's just been fantastic. I mean, it's in my opinion, as much as it's been a lackluster year, it's been a great year for Image. I agree. Um, one of the... Only great things to come out of Marvel this year has been Star Wars comics. That's what I keep. If hearing. you're not reading the Star Wars comic books, like you're missing out because they've been fantastic. Um, Princess Leia. I really hate to like diss Princess Leia because it makes me look like this guy that just like doesn't like women leads in comic books. Mm -hmm. But it's really not what it is. Right. It's really the storyline for her comic was one of the weakest ones out of all of them, and even the main Star Wars book isn't the best. But, like, uh, offshoots like Kanan from uh, Star Wars Rebels cartoon right. on Disney. That book's been awesome. Darth Vader's solo book has been awesome. Uh, Lando's book has been good. Chewbacca. All right. Considering, you know, oh, this is about the most dialogue you get from <laughs> Chewie. Uh, you know, but you, you can't complain. Uh, back to DC. DC did kill continuity this year, though. Now, so, when you say they killed it, do you mean uh, uh, killed it in a good way, like in the in the slang way, like man, y'all killed it, or killed it like, dude, you killed this? It's horrible. Uh, you could give or take that either way. I should, I guess, a better way of saying that would have been that they've done away with continuity. Okay. Um, it has, from my point of view, given you some good stories, but at the same time, it's made things confusing. Because, like I said, in independent books. You've got all your heroes represented differently, you know. There is no Green Lantern Corps. Hal Jordan is not a Green Lantern anymore. He's a renegade. Superman is super bro. There's Robo Batman. Yet, you go over in Justice League and all those characters are represented Different. as you would know them before. Right. But, you know, I mean, does that really matter if the story's good? It doesn't. No, it doesn't. I haven't gotten a chance to read Superman and Lois which is one of the few books that spun out of Convergence, mm -hmm. which is pretty much like, uh, I I'm not sure if it's pre-New 52 Superman and Lois Lane, but it's Superman and Lois Lane, and they do have a child. 
seems like some Elseworlds stuff. It is some Elseworlds stuff. They showed up during Convergence, but I'm not sure exactly where they fell in line his, his continuity-wise. Right. But then again, DC doesn't care about continuity, so it doesn't matter. No, that's what DC stands for, remember? Destroying continuity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've gotten... Uh, the, the movie universe will be blowing up next year. We've got news on that. Which doesn't really add to this year, but it does add to the excitement of next year. You know? Yeah. I mean, you've got a bunch of great stuff coming down the pipeline. Um, it really, this year, will be sparking it off, which we've talked about. We have to get back together and talk about the new Star Wars movie. Oh, yeah. Which has probably been one of the biggest things in geekdom to come out this year. Outside of maybe that... Batman Superman trailer and Ben Affleck just looking like possibly the greatest uh, rendition of Batman we're going to get on the silver screen ever. You know, you want to sit there and talk about great uh, trailers and stuff like that, you'd be remiss not to mention Deadpool. No, you, I would. Because Absolutely. that trailer just looks beautiful. As that looks like it's so pure. Did you see that uh, the clip I posted on Facebook where it's like how Ryan Reynolds spent his Halloween? I didn't. Dude, you have to see that. I'll check it out. It's him dressed as Deadpool. It's on the Comic Streamix Facebook page? It will be. Okay. Um, well, by the time this airs, it will be. Um, it's him dressed as Deadpool at night at a park with a bunch of kids dressed like members of the X-Men. Nice. Dude. Oh, my God. Hilarious. You know what? Um, All right. So that, that was awesome. I had not seen that. I'm glad we stopped for you to show me that. That was pretty good. Um, as someone, it is now on the Facebook page. As, Facebook page. as someone who did not care about Deadpool when I first saw that trailer coming out of San Diego, yeah, I was like, "This looks great." I don't care about that character at all. I will watch that movie. It looks to be one that was of those funny. That's um, actually, um, genuinely channeling what's on the page, right? Like Ryan Reynolds clearly is excited about that character. And it clearly is into it a lot. Yeah. Which is which to me makes everything. You know, as uninterested as I am as Daredevil is, I mean, <laughs> Deadpool is Deadpool. character, I will see that movie. And we will probably review it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, all these comic movies you can review yeah, next the, season. Next year, it's going to be it's gonna be the year of the review. Um, yeah, so, I mean, great, great movies coming down the pipeline. Only Star Wars this year. Was there any really... Oh, the disappointment that was Age of Ultron. In the year of comic book mediocrity. Please don't allow me to forget Age of Ultron. Go for it. I hate, just hated that movie. And, uh, you know... I don't, If Marvel keeps putting out movies like that, DC's not going to have to do much to win the battle when their movies start coming out because people are just going to want something different. Right. Uh, as far as DC... Um, they've owned the, the TV airwaves as yeah. far as the well, shows I go. I completely agree. Now, not that Marvel hasn't given us everything because they did give us Daredevil and Jessica Jones, which just went up on Netflix five or six days ago. So I'm sure the internet has exploded with Jessica Jones. Michael Bay style. Michael, yeah, absolutely. Um, but DC, hands down, has killed it. And if they continue down the path they're headed to, they're gonna the TV is gonna be owned by them. Dominating cinema. Yeah, you like that. I do like that. And I hope cinema. that's what happens next year when Batman vs Superman comes out. I don't know, man. I mean, look, like we just finished talking about how awesome Deadpool looks. We're everybody is ecstatic for Batman Superman. Mm-hmm. But I honestly think the one that's gonna come out of left field and drop everybody's jaws. Is Captain America Civil War? Yeah, but don't you, I think we're all expecting that to be good, though. True. I mean, that's not like something we're like, uh, we've seen. I'm expecting that to be great. Yeah. Coming off the heels of Winter Soldier, that movie has to be great. What if Suicide Squad turns into what Guardians did? Like nobody expected Guardians to be anything, and look how great Guardians is. What if that's Suicide it's, Squad? Then I will be eating crow, buddy. Yeah. Big time. Because, uh, you know, I didn't know what to think of Guardians. Nobody did. That's but the thing. I, I didn't poo-poo Guardians. Nobody knew what to but think. But I have, like, Did you thrown... watch Ant-Man yet? No, I have not seen Ant-Man. I'm waiting for it to come out on the DVD. Gotcha. Um, 
I just, you know, I bashed the hell out of Suicide Squad. Yes, I just did. did bash Suicide Squad last episode. Yeah, well, yes and no. Because, I mean, the bashing of Suicide Squad last episode had its merit, though. Because uh, of what they did, or what they haven't done with Killer Croc, but what they did on a free TV show with King Shark. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's that's not even bashing. That's just the plain truth. <laughs> it is the truth. That, that's You can't even consider that bashing. You know, movie, it's, uh, it's just like, dude, if you can put that much into a... What fifty six minute TV show? Yeah, maybe a little less. Forty five, probably forty four. TV show that's absolutely free mm-hmm. versus a movie that people are going to plop down mm-hmm. ten to twenty bucks to go see. Right. You know, come on. Like that's what that's my whole. Peter Croc looks like a Goomba from the Marvel. I think brothers. yes, he does. He does. And I, for those who don't know, I'm talking about the John Leguizamo, uh, Dennis Hopkins, uh, Mario Brothers movie. Dennis Hopkins. Wasn't that guy who played Mario? Dennis Hopper. Hopper. Right. Dennis Hopper. And he played King Koopa. Oh, that's right. Who was the guy who played Mario? What um, was his name? Oh, God, I don't remember his he name. He was in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little English guy. I don't remember his name. He's Something. English? Yeah, he's English. Bob really? Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. That's why I confused the two names. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah I see what you did there. But, uh, you know, Suicide Squad, man, if it surprises us, awesome. My whole issue with that movie is why can't you... <laughs> still for the life. Uh, you know, for a year in review, you knew we had to hit this, how my hatred of the Suicide Squad movie. You know, I honestly didn't even think about it. If you it just happened naturally. If you can do so much greatness on these comic book shows on WGN of all stations. Excuse me, the CW. I'm, I'm sorry, the CW. Yeah, you're right. The CW. There you go. Why can't you give us this level of excellence in a film? Warner Brothers, I'm looking at you. That's all we're looking at. You know, it's like, where is it? Now, like I said, if it ends up doing something tremendous, then, you know, I eat crow, man. I will. I will. When we do our review, if that movie was good, in my opinion, you know I will be the first one to admit that I was yeah. wrong. I but I don't think I'm wrong. You know we're doing that with the book. Yeah, I know we're doing that with the book. Speaking of the book, this is the right end for the book. We're in the, he wanted me, I, I, When we say the book, we don't mean an actual book. We yeah, no. Out. Yeah, Chris Bookout, our boy. The unofficial mascot of Comics Remixed. I took to the Facebook and said that I was coming up with a topic list for this year in review episode. And he was one of the first people that sounded off. And he said that I had to bring up Deathstroke the anti-hero teaming up with Superman and Wonder Woman. I'm going to play on eBay while you talk about this. And, you know, <laughs> I got to give him a little no, bit No, no, he's right. He's right. I got to give him some props. They have stepped up Deathstroke's game. I was going to say, yeah, this this was the year that his his reputation uh, was boistered a little bit more. A lot more people got to know who Deathstroke mm-hmm. was, whether it was comics or TV. I, and, I think, and I think Manu Bennett's portrayal of Deathstroke on Arrow had a lot to do with oh, elevating most definitely. His, the awareness of the character. Most definitely. And I think that trend will continue into next year because of Deadpool. Because most of us that know comic books, you're going to be sitting in that theater with your friend that don't know a thing about comic books, and you're going to tell them, oh, this character is really just a ripoff of Deathstroke over at DC. Yeah, like a spoof. So he'll continue to that upward His trend, in my opinion. Yeah. To rise. And then, hey, you never know with the rumors that he might be in Suicide Squad. Or in Batman vs. Superman. Yeah. You know, until these movies are released, that's all we can't. We can sit there and roll our eyes at these fan theories. But it's all it's all speculation. And, yeah, know. exactly. So we we really don't know. For all we know, what if it's true? What if Christian Bale was even pulling our legs and saying he had nothing to do with yeah, it? At the end of the movie, he comes out. I'm Batman. You know, and Ben Affleck is like, no, I mean, I'm Deathstroke, and they go at it. You just we don't know. That would be the biggest swerve ever. I'll it tell would. you that. It, it would. really would. And the thing that sucks is. I think Affleck's costume looks so awesome compared to Bale's. Well, yeah. I really hope it's not well, true. Because Affleck's costume is pulled right out of the book. That's, yeah. It's the Frank Miller suit. Mm-hmm. You know, no neck and all. It looks fantastic, dude. It looks good. I, I don't care what anybody says. I think it looks great. But, um, yeah, so there you go, book. Your props to your boy. The stroke of death. The death stroke. <laughs> <laughs> you put your eye out. And to wrap up these last two things, the some of the of biggest things I think happening this year, one of which... F*** it, Brian. One of which... What? You made me laugh, and as I laughed, I looked away, and I missed this bit. Sorry, man. I hate you. 
Oh, that's, that's cool. I didn't want to pay that that's much. A, that's a strong... No, it's cool. It's cool. I didn't want to pay that much. Well, good then. You should be happy that I, I just distracted like, you. I'm trying to snipe people, man. But anyway, sniping's wrong, man. It's just wrong. But anyway... It's, it's wrong when it happens to you. It's okay when you successfully accomplish it to something you want. True that. Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest... I think I might have already mentioned this earlier in the episode, and if I did, I apologize. But it's that big. It deserves to be talked about more. Friggin' Star Wars, man. Like I, I, you know what? I did mention Star Wars in this episode. That's just one of the biggest things for me this year has been that there's a new Star Wars movie in less than a month away now. Well, we didn't talk about the movie. We talked about the comic. <clears throat> and the, that was probably the only successful thing coming out of Marvel. That's what we mentioned. I thought we mentioned the movie. No. The movie's going to look fantastic. I mean, you're... Mixing the old with the new. I don't know any grown man that was a fan of Star Wars that didn't get the feels watching that latest trailer. I like that there's so much of this movie that's being kept under wraps. This is what real movie, comic book movies should be. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. You don't want to know everything. These spoilers. You know, we you where's the surprise? Do you remember when you used to go to a movie and all you had seen was just a little bit of trailer and you might have read an interview with the actor... I got one better for you. And Growing like, up, all you had was the movie poster, and you got a trailer on TV. Right, because yeah. Because you didn't even know they were making a movie until yeah. you saw the trailer. Right. That's it. That's all you had to yeah, go you on. had no idea. No idea. You know? Unless maybe, like, you know, you'd catch a magazine interview here and there. If you're lucky. Yeah. But now it's like, pff, if they're making a movie, if there's talk about making a movie, you know about it. Yeah. Which totally just ruins the whole, the whole thing. Okay, so we've covered Marvel and DC's biggest flops. Mm -hmm. We can't say they're hits because they really haven't had much. Yeah, no. Uh, we've talked about some of the major movies mm -hmm. that have uh, come out this year, whether you know, at length or briefly, just in mention. Mm -hmm. um, toy market, pop vinyls. Oh, that was the last thing I was going to me mention. That that uh, Funko Pop oh, invades we, 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 our lives. That, yes. This year, as for mm -hmm. Comics Remix, we launched the website. Mm -hmm. And we started the JDF versus CM Punk petition, mm -hmm. which you guys still need to go sign. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's a whole other you know year review episode. Uh, CM Punk going to the UFC. Right. What do you think? You think he's gonna fight? I, I don't know, man. At this point, I don't even care anymore. Uh, like the, it's worn off so the, much. The last I heard was that he was injured during his camp, mm -hmm. and that he's gonna be fighting even later than they thought. Now, I, like I don't even care. They're gonna have to do a lot of promotion to get me to care again. Like there was talk that. There was possible talk with uh, WrestleMania, you know, on the horizon again. Yeah. That possibly CM Punk would get whooped. And then while he was licking his wounds from his defeat, crawl back to WWF to do an, a WrestleMania match. Right. Because WrestleMania is looking very lackluster. We'll get to that. In which, lockup. you know, we talked about in the lockup nice, last yeah. week. But anyway, um, Funko Pop, dude. Wow. Blew up. Like, and then some. blew up. Now, do you think 2016 will be the... It, it continues, or do you think by this time next year, it'll be, the, it'll be the Beanie Babies? I don't see... I don't see the... Fun, see, Funko Pops would have only been around, like, three or four years now. And I don't really feel like the success of Funko Pops took off really... The, the train didn't really blow out of the station at full speed until this year. And I think that... Uh, Next year, it's just going to continue. Right. You know, because you've got more people getting in and, and seeing stuff. And like you mentioned earlier, that woman at the store that you saw that was like, oh, the C-3PO with the red arm, what's up with that? I, I think it'll continue. I mean, they're they're getting carried in more places. They're line. That's one of the things I think that draws appeal to Pop is that their licenses mm -hmm. are just, they have everything. You know, No, they don't have everything. We talked about this. Where is my uh, Looney Tunes Pops. Why have they not made Looney Tunes Pop yet? You know, that's a good question. Where's my Bugs Bunny, Marvin the Martian, That's Road a good Ryan. question. Give Why it time. Not? Give it time. How much time do we, do we I got Pops on get everything? I bet that, you'll get them. I'm surprised they haven't already because I they're Warner Brothers. Because there's the one thing you're never going to see from Pops is Nintendo. You think so? Yeah, never happened. Which, never is, no. which is stupid for Nintendo. Did Nintendo come out and say that? I just don't see them. N Nintendo is like DC. Uh, if they're not doing it themselves, they handle their outside licensing very poorly. Yeah. Which I mentioned about like my complaint about DC Hot Wheels. 
Like, you got DC Hot Wheels that started in 2012, the character cars now. Right. And since 2012, you've got, I think, 15 or 16 cars in the line. Yet, the Marvel Universe cars start, what, a year year or two ago? Mm-hmm. And there's easily probably over 30, 30 cars. The Star Wars line of Hot Wheels just started last year around Christmas. Uh, now, you've, you've already got over 20 cars. It's like, what are they doing? Right. Like, just put it out there. And Nintendo's the same way with the Amiibo crisis that you read about, you know? Yeah. They don't know how to handle things. It would be great if they did it. I mean, big, I know we're getting off subject here, but Nintendo's coming to Android and iOS devices. Okay. They're going to start releasing, like, classic Nintendo games for your iPod and Android. Which is probably a smart thing for them to do. You know, you got to diversify your line a little bit. Right. But uh, Funko Pop, dude, one of the biggest things to happen this year. Absolutely. Absolutely. When it comes to... Toys, absolutely. I mean, this that crazy. Yeah, I don't want to say it came crazy. out of nowhere because it, it was it was a slow. Build. It was a slow build. But once it hit, mm-hmm. man, did it hit? Did it? Like it hit? When, like I said, man. And it's like I'm looking around, like to my right, you got your ladies' pops. In front of you, you got your pops. On the left, you got pops. Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me, there's pops everywhere. Yeah, that's why I think pops. Nice. No, it's a lie because I just got a bunch of them. And it's and it's you know people are insane with them. I mean, we've got. Our boy Dave Bloomquist has over 400 pops now. Yeah. Has not even been collecting pops a year. And he's not alone. You can go on Facebook into these Funko Pop groups, and there are many, many collectors that have 300 plus or more Funkos. Like, people that are just collecting them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're sitting in a room that's easily got near 100, and we're specializing. Where? Here? Yeah. Well, okay. Maybe. I was going to say, let me count. Maybe half that. Maybe half that. I might have overshot that by a lot. It's probably closer to 50. But anyway, <laughs> you know, it's big. It's big. Uh, don't forget I got three in the bag I just got today. <laughs> but it's taken off with all kinds of people. Like people that didn't collect, people that aren't really into the stuff, they're into it, you know. Um, I think the only person that's not into Funko Pop is the book. You're still counting, huh? Okay, yeah, 93. Okay, so there's almost 100 in here. Almost 100. That's insane, right? Yeah. It doesn't look like it, though. It doesn't look like it. Wait, are those big three in the middle there between Groot and Harley Quinn pops? Yep. Okay, yeah, then. Okay. So nearly 100 just in the server. And I only collect little things I want. You probably have more pops than I do. Yeah, come on. Well, I didn't know how (laughs) hard you were collecting pops. I really didn't know. Well, yeah. Well, and the sad that. thing is, is I just picked up my first Star Wars pop. See, that's one that I won't, I will not get in Star Wars. That's pops. The, just the beastie one. I, I will not touch that. No. Yeah. See, I don't really have anything Star Wars outside of like my Hot Wheels cars. I got my Hot Wheels and cars. A couple and my, figures my here and there. Black you know. That's it. I've done away with all of the Star and, uh, Wars. I, I can't. I don't think I'm gonna full dive into the whole line, but I think I'm gonna go for like Jedi's and like Stormtroopers. I can't. And maybe droids. Because I've got this weird thing where I, I want to start collecting just robot pops. Like, it's about Bender, and I want to get, like, the Lost in Space robot from Bidden Planet. Gigantor, I want to start specializing just in in robots. Yeah. Star Wars pops are not for me. I've seen them, I've looked at them, but I can't, that's, no. Chrome Vader, first Star Wars pop. Nope, not doing Hopefully, it. Hopefully, it, it doesn't get too crazy. No, it's, it's hard not to, like, you know, buy them all. But look, me and her have just specialized in the few things we like, and we already have nearly 100. Wait, you said you counted 97? 93. 93? Well, I, the, the Game of Thrones, I counted the throne as one, and then I counted Dude on the top. As okay, well. yeah, they're, no, they're, they're, those totally count, because the right. throne was its own pop. Exactly, and then I counted the little snake down there. Okay. In the Jungle Book. So right on. I forgot them all. You know what? I didn't count Batman, so 94. I forgot the one with Batman, the, the Batmobile. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so 94. 93, 94, something like that. And then I got three in the bag on the floor. I kind of those. And then someone's getting a bunch for Christmas. Aww. Yeah. You didn't have to. You don't know which ones I have. Yeah, no. They're not for you. Aww. I don't love you that much to give you pops. Cool. I give you Ninja Turtle shock glasses. No. Oh, yeah, you did. But that was for my it birthday. Did. It wasn't Don't forget to beat that up. Yeah, I won't. Thanks, Mr. Dropping F-bombs all over the place. Yeah, no. But, uh, you know, that's that's pretty much for the year in the review. Lackluster year for comics. It has been, you know, and I hope next year is a lot Great better. for comic book TV. Oh, yeah. You know, um, 
I There's feel like only one book that's coming out if it's not already out that I'm really looking forward to before what's, they, this year ends. What's that? Batman Turtles. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Batman Turtles will be excellent. It better be. I I hope so. Um, I I've seen uh, some artwork online of him sitting with the girls eating a pizza. Yeah. And telling Michelangelo to chew with his mouth closed. Yeah. It's gonna be great to see them together. But uh, yeah, so I mean, New Turtles been a great book. Image has done well. The big two, not so much. Movies, TV, all over the board greatness. You know, collectibles have blown up. Specifically, Star Wars toys. You know, it's it's been as far as it's been lackluster for actual comic book stuff. Everything else has been pretty good. Yeah. And 2016 looks to be even better. Let's hope. So, um, you know, that's, this is that, that's it for our year in review. I pretty much said everything you need to say. If you want a real year review, go back to YouTube, go to comicsrebricks.com, look at everything we've done this year, look at everything we've done the past years. I want to thank everybody that actually decided to stick with us, uh, from the beginning of this year. You know, season four has been, uh, drastically different from the last three years. You know, changes happen. Um, there are some of those who have decided to stick with us and they continue to listen even at times where we personally were going through stuff and we thought you know the, we kind of admitted to ourselves where we our faults were as far as the show goes and stuff like that um, but there are those of you who decided to stay with us and for that I personally thank you uh, hopefully next year um, is a lot better assuming that nothing between our break decides that like you know hey because I'm not gonna lie I've had doubts about continuing Really it, it happens, man. It happens. You know, I figure I, I, there was a point where I was like, season four is probably gonna be our last year. You know, but um, I guess it just depends. You know, we'll see how we feel in March. Um, so even if we decide that you know what we're done, we're gonna at least have a goodbye episode. Yeah. It won't just be like this is the final one. But at the same time, I doubt it. It's just you know things happen, people change, schedules change, but we'll see where the future holds. Uh, has is proving by that just the ever creative changes in the comic stream mix brand itself with just the people involved. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, you never know. But the you website could... will continue because we all, we're always going to have a voice and an opinion. So comicsremix.com during our break here between season four and season five uh, and everything else, you know, um, just look on our website. We'll constantly be updating it throughout the, uh, the off season. Keep your eyes and your ears peeled. Yeah, because we will announce when the new episode is coming as well. If there is a new... Well, like I said, whether whether it's a continuation or whether it's a final episode, we're still going to announce when it happens. So, Star Wars review in December. Oh, yeah, so. definitely. Yeah, sure. yeah, definitely. An extra long bonus spinner rack in there. Round table. For Star Wars. Absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, regardless, dude, I feel like next year... This year was kind of tumultuous, and it wasn't good for the industry. We had our ups and downs personally as a brand. I feel like next year's got the potential to be a banner year. Let's hope so. So, high hopes. As always, check out everything we do at comicsremix.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at comicsremix at the Spinner Rack. If you want to email us in the off season, or you know, we need to start talking to creators, setting up interviews possibly for next year. Getting all that stuff going on. Um, I know I had some interviews I had planned to conduct this year. That just because of time and uh, not adequately scheduling things and things just falling through, I didn't get to it. Right. There are definitely a few people that we'll be talking to next year. And I will say whether this show continues or not, um, we will still definitely have a podcast presence. Because uh, I'm still planning on doing Let's Talk Toys. I just decided to wait and hold off and launch that with next year. Mm -hmm. That's what I figured. I figured Lex Talks Toys would Let's Talk Toys would come next year. Yeah, it's, it's and then next year. Alex's toy reviews. Uh, I don't know what he's done lately. I know he's been a busy guy with his. He's just started uh, putting everything up in his in his uh, basement now because you know when he records, he has like the backdrop. Right. So yeah. he's just started. He bought shelves. He just started putting up st display stuff. So I'm actually going to go to his house uh, in a few weeks and uh, record for Let's Talk Toys and then from there I get to see his newly remodeled basement because right when on. I the time I went to Alex's house uh, he had just bought the house so he was there less than 
two weeks. Right. So, you know, you didn't have a chance to really play right, right. or anything. Yeah, it takes time, man. It takes time to explode yourself all over your house. <laughs> Come on. I just man. have, I guess I just have a horrible turn of phrase, man. You really do. Like, you can't, nothing. Explode I can't say house. anything that doesn't come out in like double entendre in some way, you know? You could always read what I say one of two ways, possibly more. I'm ambidextrous like that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but that's it. Everybody have a happy holiday and a Merry Christmas. Stay uh, safe. Have a good Thanksgiving tomorrow. Will be tomorrow. I think it is tomorrow. We record these things in advance, so you know. The cat's out of the bag. The cat, yeah. The cat. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Uh, you know what? I think it. I'm pretty sure it's it's whatever. If it's not, yeah, have it a is. good holiday. It is. It is Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. So enjoy your football and your turkey and your time with your family. Yeah. Be thankful for everything. You know, rather than even though the comic industry sucked this year, be thankful it's still around. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe the the powers that be will open their eyes and realize they need to get it back to prominence. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, Hopefully, or the fears we expressed many issues, or I'm sorry, episodes ago about the end of the industry could come true. Yeah, just just be thankful for the fact that, you know, well, you know what, since we're, since we're being thankful here, uh, I want to be sit and, and just give thanks for to our fans, like I said earlier, who have followed us uh, this year, uh, who have followed us since the very beginning. Uh, I'm thankful for everybody who helped the brand get to where it is, you know, who no longer a part of the show, but we thank you anyway. Um, I'm thankful for everyone who's helped me to continue my personal collection in some way, shape, fashion, or form. Um, I am thankful for having a collection. I'm thankful to those who are patient enough with me uh, for trades and, and deals and stuff like that. You know, you continue waiting and continue waiting. Um, 2016 will be the year where you get everything squared away. Um, you know, thankful for having a family to motivate me to continue to want to do this show. Um, I would say I'm thankful for having a, uh, a co-host who's always on the ball with the blogs, but he's not, so, you know, screw him. Uh, <laughs> See, I had you there, didn't I? See, you I was did. going on like this little tangent. I was like, oh. Yeah, no, screw you. I'm going to get uh, brown nose. <laughs> uh, but no, in, in all seriousness, thank you to everyone who's been listening. Uh, thank you to those who on our social media continue to share our um, our links and our updates. Uh, that's pretty much all I got, man. You know, just, just thanks for helping Comics Remix continue to be what it is, I guess. Thank you to the creators who have decided to give us time and, you know, do interviews with us, be on the film, be whatever have you, who recognize us as being uh, a brand no matter how big or small we are, you know, taking the time out of their busy schedules to contribute, you know. So, I mean, I don't know. Do you have any uh, things to be thankful? I pretty much nailed it. In, in Life, terms. liberty, and a happy home. Well, I meant it in terms of the show. In terms of the show. I, that's what I said. You know what? I'm always good. grateful for any feedback we get from fans. Very good, yes. Um, yes you know, I I like just doing the show for me. So even if people aren't doing it, I just, it's, 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 I'm thankful for the outlet that I didn't have without it. Gotcha. And, gotcha. Uh, you know, I look forward to boatload of stuff we're gonna have to talk about come February or March or whenever we do episode sixty nine. <laughs> the one time I was just gonna let it slide. Yeah. Yeah. Ha, let it slide. Yeah, see. Anyway. You're just as bad as I am. No, I'm not. That's uh it folks. Again, thank you to everybody. Have a happy, safe Thanksgiving. Have a happy and safe holiday. Whether you celebrate Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Whatever you do, stay safe and have a happy new year.